Hello everyone, this is Dimitri from Agnicor and uh, I wanted to do a uh, update on the Anathax Pile technology that allows uh, .NET developers to store native .NET CLR common language runtime objects in the uh, in the um, in the heap. Uh, I mean off the heap. I mean in the process but off the heap. Uh, although it does use the managed heap because it uses bytery. So uh, what's happening now, I have allocated a few objects here on my local uh, on my local computer that uh, basically tells me that uh, I'm at 300 uh, million objects and I can do uh, uh, you know I, I, I can do the read so this, uh, uh, let me let me put this at six uh, six threads and start inserting those objects and I insert so uh, the reason why I put six this machine has six physical cores 12 logical I don't want to go that high because I'm gonna lose my video recording capability on this machine so it goes pretty smoothly uh, all the way up to the up to the range uh, of uh, 600 million objects, uh, you know, on this machine, this machine has 64 gigabytes of RAM and the types of objects that I allocate here are this type of object. So, though, you know, it has a few fields, a few strings, the date time, uh, the bool, the, you know, the, the byte arrays, some have byte array, etc. So, uh, let me, let me pause that uh, and uh, while it does it, I'll, uh, remind you that the whole point of this thing is that we're 400 million objects yes million 400 million I do a garbage collector and I'm at 11 milliseconds latency 20 milliseconds 11 milliseconds 13 9 17 11 9 13 3 15 7 so it doesn't go it doesn't go higher than 20 milliseconds because we keep this off the heap in terms of garbage collector visibility so the purpose of this video I have uh, installed a machine here a virtual machine that has uh, let me run this I don't know why I paused it so a, a virtual machine on uh, Google uh, Cloud and uh, this guy has 24 logical, 12 physical, how they claim it, but uh, it's a virtual machine, it's an emulation. But you see, I get here on the same application 4.2, you know, 4.3 uh, million inserts a second, and I'm I just passed a uh, uh, good timing. I just passed a billion object mark, and this machine has 157 gigabytes of RAM. And I've consumed 96, obviously, or that's committed size. So, okay, uh, 87, 88 gigabytes. And I keep increasing this object, uh, you know, count. And if I do a, a garbage collector and at this, at this volume, I get 43 milliseconds. Now, this machine is pretty slow. It has a 2.3 gigahertz processor. Uh, virtual processor, whereas that machine that I showed you, that the, the 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 host machine has 3.2, so it's faster, it's physical, it has six cores, whereas this has 24 virtual cores. All right, and uh, so what do we have here? What do we have? We have um, a pretty stable operation. I don't have any jitter in the in the garbage collector channel. Uh, in the garbage collector related logic, it, it, it still holds around 4 million at 1.3 uh, billion objects, a se uh, billion objects, not a second, but resident in memory. Uh, at, uh, we have used up 109 gigabytes of RAM and uh, we're still inserting these objects. And the garbage collector is still very swift. And what we're gonna do now, I'm gonna start deleting some of these objects. You know, I delete some objects, minus 15 million. I add some objects. I'm gonna be dragging this back and forth. So I create some some fragmentation in memory. And and we can clearly see, we can clearly see how those numbers jump up and down. And um, so, and, and then if I add, 
add those objects my um, uh, you know performance here reflects that I was I was you know this graph here this log rather it it reflects that I removed some objects and I now I keep uh, started adding them again back in the in the pile um, so the purpose of this is this the purpose of this is is to illustrate uh, is to illustrate that um, you can get to one point you can get to 1.5 billion objects on this uh, you know on this machine and uh, what happens is that you allocate a lot of RAM but you keep those objects those are those are classes so look you get a pointer like this it's a struct the struct it doesn't the garbage collector doesn't see it because it's basically two integers right and then you dereference this pointer and you get a true dot net object which I serialized to JSON here so I can view it on screen so let's see uh, let me turn this off let's see so we had we had 1.5 billion objects and this is the object that I put here this the second one I put it here this is 1.5 billion objects like this with different random data like this it looks like this in memory so what would happen if I if I put let's say five hundred thousand five hundred thousand and and I put 24 threads and I do parallel get on 24 threads uh, and uh, where's my performance where's oh it's done uh, so I got I got those things at the 3.6 million reads a second so I Ma materialize or how do you say it? I, I hydrate right I turn this pointer into a, an object that I can that I can uh, that I can see right so uh, this 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 is the performance I get on a single thread so I did 500,000 500,000 reads and that gives me this performance right here so it's on the single thread so the read and write performance pretty much equal. So on the single thread, you can process like 600,000 transactions like this. You can put it in the memory and you can resurrect it back. Now, this is the memory manager called Pile, an effects pile. On top of that, we have built a cache server which resides right in your process. It doesn't go outside of your process. It's right in your process. So what the hell do you need this for? So, for example, we can keep the neural network information in memory. The neural network information supposedly doesn't doesn't take that much. So we're doing a convolutional network right now for some image recognition. And to do that, we need to train it for a very long period of time. Now, what makes the matters worse, we don't know what kind of neural network we're going to build. So we built like three or four different pieces. And every neural network produces around a around few million nodes in it and, and connections and everything. So what we do with this, we store this in a in a uh, uh, in this memory manager that uh, actually ends up storing like 25 million, 30 million objects, C sharp objects that is. So and some of those objects are the part of. I mean, most of those objects are part of the neural network itself. Others are used for training, for training samples, images and stuff like that, that you can preload from file. Now, another piece of technology is the use of memory mapped files that I will show you in some other, you know, video. But uh, the point here is that when you train your neural network, let's say, it's a long and tedious process and you can keep all of that stuff in memory and let it run for, for, for a day, for two days. You know, when you do like gradient descent or something like that, those algorithms, they take a lot of time. And um, if you have all of that stuff in memory, that really helps the... Uh, you know, we used to have some training samples in MongoDB, but that works slower because it's out of process. You need to employ a socket connection to take this data out. So anyhow, 
Uh, with this approach, what we also use it for, you can you can take your uh, you can take your high frequency trading, for example, and and store those samples in this thing, right? And then index them on symbol on trade symbol and the 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 part of the day, okay, time of the day. So this way you can suck those things from out of memory uh, on the server and serve them to your trader. So the trader see what happened like three hours ago with this stock. What happened, you know, two hours ago with that stock and st stuff like that. So you can show those graphs. You can take it right out of memory. And it's way faster than uh, reading that stuff from uh, databases and uh, other sources. But uh, I'm still getting this short garbage collector responses very short and then if i purge this i hit the purge button right now and the magic happens where's my memory uh the memory is right here so i just deleted 1.5 billion this is this is thousands millions billion so 1.5 billion objects and um the process, uh, the garbage collector has not started yet because, I mean, I just lost those references. If I click this button right now, this is what garbage collector is going to deallocate those 120, whatever, however many gigabytes we have allocated. And um, uh, that's it. I'm going to I'm going to get to square zero, you know, where I started from. So I get I just deallocated 138 gigabytes of ram in 14 seconds yeah that's a lot that's a long time but i have de deallocated everything i have allocated so i can click the button again and start adding some some uh you know at four four million uh transactions a second i can start adding them um you know back into the into the pile and i'm already out at 56 you know 60 million objects here so it works pretty quickly. And my garbage collector, while the system is operating under such a load, it's under, you know, it's under the threshold of being acceptable, rather unacceptable. So it is acceptable. Uh, it is under, you know, 30 milliseconds, whatever. Uh, and I'm allocating memory again, and I'm allocating it here off the heap, off the system, off the heap, allocating those segments and it works. So, and if I do the purge, all of that is gonna go away. 230 million objects deleted. I'm gonna do a garbage collector and I'm gonna release this pressure, which is 29 gigabytes in four seconds and my garbage collector is, is instantaneous again after I've done this. Thank you very much. Go check us out on GitHub and uh, let me know what you think and uh, I'll see you next time. Thank you.